So, null space and column space are completely different things. But because they have similar names, and because they're usually introduced at the exact same time in the context of linear systems, and because they're both unlike anything that most students have ever seen before, there's actually a tendency to confuse them. And I think that's quite natural. I actually think if they were more similar concepts, then we would focus on the differences and it would be actually easier to remember which is which. But because they're completely different concepts, we tend to focus on the similarities, and there are quite a few. They both have the word space in their name. They're actually both linear spaces, and they're written similar in similar formats. So we focus on the similarities and get confused as to which is which. So here are a couple hints to keep them apart. Well, number one, pick a matrix that's as far from square as you can imagine. Well, or at least sufficiently far from being square. In this case, two by four. For square matrices, these two spaces look even more similar. I'll remind you why in a moment. And it makes it more difficult to keep them apart. But for rectangular matrices, they live in completely different spaces. For example, the column space in this case lives in R2. The column space, now focus on the name, and that'll be hint number two, is the space of columns. It's the space that the columns live in. And these columns live in R2. Let's write it down. They live. They're not R2, smaller than R2, but at least they're a subpopulation of R2. They're pairs of numbers. It's the space of columns. So the name helps. So think of the name and the function and for a rectangular matrix, the dimension of the parent space. And the null space, the elements of the null space have as many entries as there are columns. Once again, I'll remind you why. So they live in completely different spaces. The null space lives, this is uh, the mathematical symbol for part of, in R4, the number of columns. All right, so they both have to do with columns, but column space is the space of columns. And null space has something to do with relationships among the columns. So the column space has the same dimension as the height of the matrix, and the null space has the same dimension as the width of the matrix. So that's hint number one. Think about rectangular matrices, and that will help. Number two, remember the purpose. And the purpose is most clear in the context of linear systems. In fact, outside of linear systems, neither one of these concepts is particularly interesting. These concepts are not interesting on their own, I would say. They're particularly interesting in the context of applications, and the primary application is linear systems. So when you have a linear system like this, you must think of it as a problem in decomposition. I won't review that right now. That must be deep inside you by now and should be your primary interpretation of linear systems. We have a decomposition problem. So the first question is, is it even possible? And it's only possible if the right-hand side lives in the same space as the columns. It has to be in that family in order to be represented by them. And in this case, it is, because the column space consists of vectors where the second entry is twice the first. I made it very easy to see. Twice the first, twice the first, twice the first. So that's all we can possibly get. So that's the column space. This is a nice expression. And after all, the column space is not an expression. It's a set of vectors. An expression just describes it. But this expression certainly describes the family of vectors, the full set of vectors, where the second entry is twice the first. It's any multiple of this vector. So the question of existence, whether there is even a single solution is a question of the column space. Is the right-hand side in the column space? So I think it's best, if you want to remember the difference, to focus on the column spaces first. Remember the name and its interpretation, but more importantly, remember its purpose. And its purpose is to help you determine whether the right-hand side is feasible, whether it's possible to get the right-hand side. In other words, whether there is even a single solution. So that's the purpose of the column space. And if the right-hand side is in the column space, and in this case it is, then there is a solution. And the next question, well, is there only one or many? 
And that question is answered by the null space. The purpose of the null space, always remember the purpose, is to determine whether a solution is unique and if it's not unique to capture all possible solutions. Well, why would in this case the solution not be unique? And the answer is always the same because not only can we get the right hand side, well from the decomposition point of view it's super easy. Just take five of the first column and none of the remaining columns. So yes, of course it's possible, that's one, right? So where do all the other solutions come from? Well, all the other solutions come from combinations of these variables that don't alter the right-hand side. And what would those combinations be? Those would be the combinations that just produce zero. So five, zero, zero, zero will give us the right-hand side. Let's maybe scribble it in. Five, zero, zero, zero. So that will be our particular solution you can think of as our starting point for capturing all possible solutions. And then now let's think of all the possible combinations of these variables, in other words, combinations of these columns, that won't change what this gives us by producing zero on their own. And of course, the key here is the relationship among the columns. So, because this column, for instance, is twice this one, if you take them in proportion to negative one and none of the remaining columns, and you can see two, negative one, zero, zero here, then this combination on their own will produce zero, zero, the zero column. And when added to this combination, five, ten will be unchanged. So that's what the null space is about. The null space is about getting zeros in various ways by various combinations of the columns. So once again, the name helps you. Null means zero, nil, zero. And so we're looking for combinations that produce zero. And so when it comes to the null space, we're looking for zeros. So we have to capture all possible ways to get the zero vector out of the columns. That's why these elements live in R4 because they're combinations of columns. If you can think of the column space is what you can get out of the columns and the null space is you're focusing on the combinations, not on the columns themselves, but relationships among them. Another way of saying it is this. While the column space focuses on the values of linear combinations of columns, the null space focuses on the coefficients. That's why the column space lives in R2, because each of the columns lives in R2, so linear combinations of columns live in R2. And the null space lives in R4. Well, that's because there are four columns. So coefficients and the solutions of the system come in sets of four. And because they come in sets of four and the null space focuses on the coefficients, the null space lives in R4. So we're looking for combinations of columns that produce null or zero. So I think Focus on the name, on the purpose, and on the dimension. And that will help you keep the null space and the column space apart in your mind. And I think that this case of a two by four matrix is something that makes, it, makes the difference very easy to see. So I'm about to erase this and write down the matrix whose purpose is to make it difficult to see. But once you've mastered these two concepts and their difference, I think that no matter how confusing I try to make it, you'll be able to tell which is which without any problem. So let's take a look at that one. So here's the matrix I'd like to talk about. It's three by three, and I guess I'm trying to clear up some confusion by giving you the most confusing matrix I could think of. So this is arguably a very questionable strategy, but I think it'll work. So let's see how it goes. So because this matrix is square, it makes it a little bit more confusing to think about the column space and the null space because they both live in R3. That is not to say that they're both three-dimensional, they're not, but they're both subsets of R3. So they're both three elements tall. So that makes it a little bit more confusing. And look what else I did. I made the last column the sum of the first two, and that will help us identify the null space. Now thinking about the column space, I made the last entry the sum of the first two in every column. So it's the same property for rows and columns. The last column is the sum of the first two, and the last row is the sum of the first two. 
So does that mean that the column space and the null space will be the same? Well, absolutely not. So the property may be the same and will leverage the same property to discover different relationships. And remember that they cannot be the same because the dimension of the null space plus the dimension of the column space equals three. So they cannot possibly be the same type of the same space because then their dimensions would be the same and then they would add up to an even number and they add up to three. So they cannot be the same. So let's see how one and the same property leads to completely different spaces. I think we should start with the null space. And for the null space, we'll take advantage of the fact that the last column is the sum of the first two. So if we add the first two columns and subtract the last column, <coughs> excuse me, we will end up with zero. So we're going after zero, null, the null space. Null space all about the relationships among the columns. So from here, we determine that the null space is one, one, negative one, any multiple of that vector, and we're done with the null space. And this null space indeed tell us that the last column is the sum of the first two. So we're done with the null space. Now let's think about the column space. So the best way to capture the null space is to translate words into equations. And the words are, the last entry is the sum of the first two. Since each column has this property, any linear combination of columns will have that property because it's a linear property. And so the null space will consist of vectors like this. Any entry for the first one, any number in the second entry, but the last entry must be the sum of the first two. So here is the column space and here is the null space. Now, some people prefer writing the column space in this format. I do because this is the format that's most conducive to translating bad into words. If you look at it and you say last entry is the sum of the first two, very clear, makes for a very easy test for a given vector to determine whether or not it's in the column space. But if you prefer this format, you can break this up and write this as A times 1, 0, 1, there's one A here, one A here, plus B, 0, 1, 1. All right, let me make sure that it fit. It fit perfectly. So here is your column space, here is your null space. <coughs> Both take advantage of the same property, the last column or row being the sum of the first two, but they do it in completely different ways. So the idea behind this confusing example was to give you a matrix that first of all is square, which meant that both the column space and the null space live in R3, but also to give you a matrix where the relationships that lead to the null space and the column space are similar. Nevertheless, I believe there was no difficulty in identifying the column space and the null space. You simply have to remember their purpose. The column space is the space of columns. It's the set of all vectors that can be represented by linear combinations of columns. And with the null space, the focus is on the linear combinations. In other words, the focus is on the coefficients. It captures the coefficients of linear combinations that produce the zero vector, null space. Null means zero. So there you go. Null space and column space are both instrumental in helping us solve linear systems of equations, and they play completely different, albeit complementary roles. So I hope that you found this discussion quite helpful.